Peter didn't know his rescue was real until he was actually rescued. An uproar in the crowd. And Herod Agrippa learns the truth. All of this and more coming up next on Bible Discovery TV Quick Study. Make sure you join us and get your Bible out. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hemp. I'm Janice. Thank you for joining us today on Quick Study Television, a program designed to introduce you and take you through the Bible. Now, when we do that, we're talking about assignments, and today's assignment is rather interesting. We're going to speak from Acts chapter 12 to 14. We're going to focus on Acts chapter 12, and we learn something interesting. Peter didn't even know that his rescue was real until he was fully free. That's something very interesting as we look at Rhoda and some of the others who tried to answer the door. But we also have Corey here with Bible history and archaeology. Corey? In Acts chapter 12, we read about the unfortunate death of Herod Agrippa. So we're going to be focusing in on the family of the Herods today. The family of the Herods. That's mm. not easy. That's confusing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, we'll try to make sense of that today. Now, you have a do you know question. Yes, I do indeed. Do you know to whom the people were shouting this to? The voice of a God and not of a man. The voice of a God and not of a man. And not of a man. Really? Okay. Really? Well, that and more coming up later. Make sure you stay there and get your Bible out and your power guide and let us study. Chapter 12, we read a record of Herod Agrippa's unfortunate death. Right now, you and I are going to focus in on the family of the Herods to explain Agrippa's context. And then afterwards, we're going to talk a little bit more about this event. Filled with execution, betrayal, paranoia, multi-marriages, and political maneuvering, the life of the Herod family is contrasted by the life of Christ that occurred within and despite it. Herod, nicknamed the Great, came into power first as the governor of Galilee. He was appointed by his father Antipater, the governor of Palestine, for Rome. Right away, Herod began attempted reforms to Galilee, while fighting the dissatisfaction of the people at being ruled firstly by an Idumean, a people group forced to convert to Judaism a few generations before, and secondly, by an Idumean representing Rome. Soon, however, an invading force of Parthians sent Herod on the run. He outsurvived his father and made it to Rome, where he was entitled King of Palestine and ushered back to deal with the Parthians. Three years later in 40 BC, a resourceful Herod had successfully ousted the Parthians and gained his kingdom that he would keep until his death in 4 BC. Herod is best known for his massive building projects, especially the Grand Temple in Jerusalem. Yet he was a cruel, paranoid man, prone to quick executions of anyone that might pose a threat. No one was exempt, not even his wives or children. The Israelite countryside is still dotted with remains of Herod's palaces where he would retreat for protection from perceived and real enemies. Finally, after ruling as king for 36 years, Herod the Great died of a debilitating illness. As his last act, Herod had hundreds of citizens rallied into a building and ordered them murdered upon his death in a ploy to create nationwide mourning. Once Herod passed, his orders were ignored. 
Three of his surviving sons took over for their father. Two were successful, Antipas over Galilee and Philip over the Northeast. The third was deposed by Rome and instead procurators like Pontius Pilate were installed to govern Judea. Now, the record in Acts chapter 12 of Herod Agrippa's death is mirrored in a slightly later historic document from uh, a Jewish man turned Roman historian. His name is Flavius Josephus, and he also records Herod Agrippa's death. Now, he... Uh, explains the people calling Herod a god by saying that he was wearing such a glorious robe uh, that uh, Acts chapter 12 also mentions uh, his robe and his clothing at that event. But Josephus says that because of the gold and silver woven into that robe, the sun hit it and he was bright. And they said, you look and sound just like a god. And of course, Herod Agrippa accepts that. Now in the book of Acts, uh, his being struck ill instantaneously is credited to an angel sent by God to humble Herod Agrippa and bring a judgment onto him. But in Josephus, uh, he says that he is struck with a bowel disease and it takes a few days and he dies. So uh, two explanations explaining the exact same event, two different witnesses of history, that this really did happen. It did happen and it was a tragic ending. And the thing is, it didn't have to end that way. It could have come a different way. Mm -hmm. Herod could have repented. There's a lot of things that could have happened, but, you know, it didn't go that way. Well, interesting. Uh, by the way, if you're not on the mailing list, then you won't receive the Bible guide for next year. You might want to be interested in that. Our address is P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, l 9 w 5G2. Now you can call at 724-733-8336 or 519-940-8338. Remember that you can also reach us at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Let's study on. was rescued from prison by God in the early church. He was taken captive and placed in a deep inner cell by Herod, which pleased the Jews. See, Herod was trying to win favor, and he found that the Jews liked when the Roman government targeted the disciples of Christ. This story is told in chapter 12 of the book of Acts. What was the reason that God persecuted Peter and then rescued him? Why was he miraculously freed from the cell? The story covered the remarkable facts of the telling of God's provision in times of great need. The church was consistent in prayer for the disciple of Christ, and their prayers were answered. Chapter 12, verses 5 through 17. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. 
And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, It is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go, tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Acts chapter 12, verses 5 through 17. Peter escapes from prison. What is this? This is an interesting read today as we continue in the book of Acts and study the escape of Peter. Now, Peter, of course, is a great preacher, and in Acts chapter 12, he's preaching, he's put into prison. James is killed. And so now the enemy is gaining a foothold on all of the people. And I'm glad you decided to join us for this read in the book of Acts. It's very interesting as we go through the Acts of the Holy Spirit, which is the beginning of the church. And so our, our uh, particular background notes today say this. It says, our overview, strong miracles. Now, this is a different miracle, very original. We're going to look at Acts 12, but our reading assignment is Acts 12 through 14. And if you wonder or think about what you're reading, this is interesting. Our focus is on Acts 12. And as we look at this 5 to 17 today, we are going to explore the reading and the understanding of what took place and the details of what took place in the prison cell that Herod had opened up for Peter. Because you might think this is crazy, this stuff. It is. So as we think about this, I want to alert you and get you to pay attention because we're going to focus on this very carefully. Now, there's four points in the Bible guide. We're only going to preach on three of them today because that's all that we can do in this time. But get your Bible guide for all the information and all the new stuff. Acts 12, verses 5 to 7 is a very important read. Let's look at it. It says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Now, Peter was prayed for by the church. Okay, back to 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers, okay? He's got two chains on between the soldiers. And the guards were before the door keeping the prison. So he's chained and he's got them there. And then all of a sudden the guards are guarding the door. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone from in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise quickly. And he, his chains fell off his hands. Now look at this. Peter's inside the prison. He's got the guards on him and he's sleeping there and he's taking it easy. And all of a sudden, a light shines. Everything comes in. The chains fall off. He gets up and the door opens and there he goes. That's an amazing thought. It's an amazing story. And Peter thinks that she's just imagining it at first. Then he gets out in the street and he realizes, wait a minute, this is really happening. That's fascinating, which brings me to this point. Peter was saved by God's angel, and he didn't even recognize how real it was. He, had rescued, he was rescued quietly. <laughs> now, here is Herod, and Herod's doing all the work, but here's the key. The people are praying in the church. And so the prayer is responding. God is responding to the prayer. And the people don't even know it. He's going to come and knock on the door, and they're not even sure who it is. And so it's interesting to see how God answers your prayer. And you don't even know that's the answer to your prayer. That's amazing. Well, then we go to Acts chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. And it says, Then the angel said to him, 
Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put your garment on and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and he did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but he thought he was seeing a vision. And see, that's the point that Peter was making. He wasn't sure if he was in a vision or what, but he just assumed that nothing was happening. Now, it's interesting how many times we pray. And we pray and we ask God for things. God answers prayer. And so prayers are answered, but oftentimes the prayers are answered not when the person's still there because the person gave up and went away. I'm going to tell you that God answers prayer 50 years, five years, five minutes, five months, doesn't matter. God answers prayer. And so you pray and then there it is. And God is answering this prayer and Peter doesn't know it. Peter thought he was seeing a vision. And when the angel was saving him, <laughs> he wasn't seeing a vision. It was really happening to him. Can you imagine that? Being there when all of this is happening and not realizing it's real. Well, then we go back to the other scripture and it says this in 10. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and they went down to one street and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent this angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the Jewish people. See, isn't that amazing? Peter himself realizes this is real. This is not fake. This really happened. And so he has this experience inside of himself seeing how God can rescue. He was slated to be executed, but he wasn't because the angels saved him. How important is that today? And I want to speak to the people this. Peter was moved to reality. Reality, he realized he was set free by God. How many people are in the audience at this moment who are here right now looking at this set, looking at all this beautiful stuff, and they're saying, you know, I've prayed for 50 years, but God hasn't answered. Well, let me tell you something. God answers your prayer. He does. And so you need to keep praying with the right attitude. It's important to pray with the right attitude. And pray with the right substance. It's important to pray with the right substance. And understand that God will answer your prayer. Very important. You see, when we started the church in Orangeville, Ontario, that was an answer to prayer that had come 60 years before. God will answer prayer. You just have to be in the right place for it. Think about it. of the book of Acts records uh, the ministry and the life of Paul the Apostle. Now he first appears under the name Saul and quickly it gets turned into Paul. Right now you and I are going to put together a ministry and history biography of Paul. The Apostle Paul is involved in approximately one third of the New Testament of the Bible. His relationship with Christ forged his teaching on Christianity and helped to form Christian understanding of the Gospels and the Old Testament. Paul was raised as a Pharisee, so his role in interpreting Christ for believers is very fitting. The term Pharisee is translated separated ones, coming from the Hebrew root perush, meaning to separate or to interpret. Paul, a converted Pharisee, was himself focused on correctly interpreting the Old Testament and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Details of Paul's early life are revealed throughout his speeches in Acts and in his New Testament letters. He was born in Tarsus, the capital and privileged city of the Roman province of Syria. Paul was born into Roman citizenship through his family, which gave him maneuverability and protection during his teaching career. 
as a Roman citizen, Paul would have had three names, of which we only know his surname, his cognomen, Paulos. Paul's extensive travels through the Roman Empire, building up Christian communities, are often categorized into three missionary journeys, ending with a two-year imprisonment in Caesarea and a transfer to Rome in an appeal to Caesar. The book of Acts concludes with Paul under house arrest in Rome. Then the Bible goes silent, but Paul's history does not. Early Christian history points to Paul being released and continuing his missions, possibly even achieving a visit to Spain mentioned by Paul in Romans chapter 15. What is clear is that any new mission was not long lived. Paul was rearrested and beheaded during Emperor Nero's persecution of the Christians. War. When is it right? When is it wrong? There are principles guiding us in this fallen world to make good decisions about when to fight and how to fight. Join Corey, Janice, and Rod Hembry as they uncover the facts of war and learn what the Bible says about holy war. This video is critical for every believer to know now. When is it right to go to war? For your copy, write to us and send $25 as an offering or more to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada and the rest of the world, write to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. You can also get this particular video at www.biblediscoverytv.com. For safe giving, give there. Thank you for staying with us here on the Bible Discovery TV Quick Study Program. I want to tell you what we're going to do next time. On the Quick Study Program next time, we're going to focus on James chapter 1 through 5, where we will learn that wisdom is something that comes with a great test of faith. And we'll discover that and much more next time on Quick Study. Make sure you stay there and make sure you be with us. We have Do You Know coming yes, this way. Yes, we do. And we have been reading Acts chapters 12 through 14. And if you have been watching this program, you will have already determined the answer to this question. Here it is. Do you know to whom the people were shouting this to? The voice of a God and not of a man. Do you know, Corey, who they were shouting to? I do know because I did my segment on it today. <laughs> um, that would be Herod or Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa. What uh -huh. do you think? She's absolutely right. And I know you, the viewer, were too. So very good. Well done. Excellent. I wanted to mention this. We've got two months now that we're actually one month now. One month away. That we're going to mention this. This is the Bible guide for November. And this is 32 pages that completes our guide for the year. Now, these Bible guides, they're 32 pages with original content. There's no repeat content. There's no content that we grab from somebody else. This is content that I constructed and I put together for reading the Bible. Now, if you would like to read the Bible for next year and December, you have to be on the mailing list automatically. We'll tell you about that in a moment. But you wanted to show them that little code at the back. Well, yes, I did. This is how the pocket guide will come to you once a month. And inside you will find the discovery letter that Rod quite often mentions, especially in your strength and your mind segment, uh, because the answers not only are on the website, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, but it's also in the discovery letter, which comes to you inside your pocket guide, along with a, an envelope inside so that you can correspond with us every month. Now, on the back of the pocket guide, you will find a little code. Now, Rod, maybe you can do a better job okay. at explaining what that code does. Take your cell phone and aim it at that code. 
And then you've got to get a reader, a little reader reads those little bars, and I think that uh, you'll discover that's interesting. And when you read that, it takes you to a, a video that we prepared just for you. And so every month we have something where it will take you there if you actually get the book. So let me understand, if, if, I, if I run my phone over this, there's a special app or something that I need to get for that, and, yes. and it will take me to a new video every month. It will, and indeed, so you can, when you get it, you can write to us at P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668150. And in Canada, write to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. For a gift in any amount, we look forward to hearing from you. The success of Peter's deliverance was the Lord rescuing him through the time that people prayed for his release. At first, they didn't even believe their prayers had been answered when Peter showed up at the door. Time in prayer is never wasted. God rewards when we pray with deep and innermost power. People in today's world pray and understand the power of prayer. There is great strength for living when we choose to spend time in prayer. We should pray every day. We should spend time praying for our work and our ways of the day. God will reward our times of prayer. And so with that we pray, Lord, help me to pray. In our Strength in Your Mind segment today, we have a great Bible verse for you. Where does the Bible say, King James Version, New King James Version, quote, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Okay, wait a minute, that's, a, that's important. If you think you know where that is, that's the New King James Version. Go to Bible Discovery TV and click on the bottom of the page, the left-hand side, where it says Strengthen Your Mind, you will find it. Now, where does it say that? That's incredible. And so as we explore this, you'll learn. Now, if you know Jesus Christ, great. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, or you've never really given him your life, come to Jesus today. He chose you, you must choose him. He came and he died on the cross and he rose again for you. But you have to choose him. And you say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I choose you today to be my Lord. Help me, I believe you rose from the grave. In Jesus' name, amen. To get the full impact of this ministry, join us at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. For video, radio, audio, and all kinds of material, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com.